good. Buddy, I'm glad to have you back. Are you, you really? Uh, did you actually miss me? A little bit. It's uh, it's quiet when you're not here. There's nobody to mess around and prank and jack around with. So I'm yeah. glad to have you back. This thing looks sick, dude. It's super clean. I uh, I like all the uh, dry ice blasted stuff. Or the this the is vapor va blaster. Oh, so okay. Vapor blaster. Okay, it's so basically like a. It's like a weird process. It takes way longer so than you think. It's different than the dry ice blasting. It. The yep. vapor blasting. Yep. Okay. And so the vapor blast. It's basically water with like a really really fine. It's almost like it feels like dirt or like a paste huh is what it what it feels like so it takes a lot longer than you would think but then you get nice aluminum yeah, it looks to look great. like that all the zinc plated stuff like all the the and then the the wiring specialties harness man look look at that you it's can't beautiful. see you, you don't see any of the harness in the motor little wires all, you know what i mean like and that looks super sick we did some last minute stuff right here we had to do the hardware for the fuel pump i would like to kind of tuck some more of this like factory clean wiring clean bit. that up a little bit the last day at the shop over there was just kind of a mad rush to get this thing kind of to drive to grid life and i drove it back to tommy's shop from grid life and we we're talking about bringing another car home from tommy's which you guys will see here in the future there's a transporter that was transporting dustin williams car back to california barely got the car done enough to drive to grid life and flew over there to load it up and it was like a good 40 minute drive like through the mountains like yeah yeah to... from the videos it's really pretty up there it was sick so it was cool that i was actually able to drive this thing in connecticut but now that it's back here needs a tune needs cleaned up we need to do a couple other little things and then we are going to start doing the paint and body work on it so you can see right here little chips little chips overall a really clean car but look at the roof yeah the bay looks incredible i'm excited to see the whole car sprayed because as you can tell you know the bay is like super super white this is kind of off white probably just maybe different paint color maybe from you know the years of fading and whatnot mm -hmm. but like somebody painted that right there. there's a yeah, little we'll piece of rust that. right there a couple little things like you can see like chips on the edge like down there and then a minor minor tiny little bit of rust like right here on the edges so we're gonna get started right away on this thing once we finish up some more stuff that we kind of have going on around the shop but you know kind of what i was just telling sean is like this kind of needs to be the new the new norm like yeah. just the the style of builds that we do and I, i've been telling you that actually for a while but you know we definitely want to start with this and, and move forward in the same direction with just the the quality of build how clean everything is, you know, OEM specs, super clean paint work, super clean engine and, work, all that stuff, so. And I don't wanna necessarily do like OEM everything. I don't wanna do like the FPI spec because I wanna do, you know, there's Trevi's Customs around here. I wanna do the Trevi spec of stuff. Yeah. With that, kind of the whole point of going to Connecticut was kind of seeing how Tommy does it and kind of picking and choosing on what I wanted to do moving forward. One of the things that I seen out there that I liked was just some of his tools and some of the things that he had. And it was a previous body shop and they had these stands right here. So one of the first things that I did before we even actually got back, cause I, I got on the internet and I started looking for these panel stands. I was like, man, we need those to like hang doors and fenders. If you guys didn't know, we are still finishing painting up the C10. I got the bed painted on that early last week, but we still have to do a little bit more work and paint these things. And I was like, you know what would work, work really good is these stands. So the stands are actually from Astro Tools and I've worked with Astro in the past, I think it was about two years ago when we were doing paint body work on something else. They sent me a bunch of tools, some sanders and things like that. So I actually reached out to them and they were like, oh yeah, we'll send you some panel stands. And we also have a bunch of other stuff. So they sent us this whole box of all this stuff right here. So now we're gonna do a quick little unboxing. Check her out, dude. And see what, oh, uh, buddy. See what kind of stuff. Dude, look at this. Get a look at this. Just, just look, look at all this. 
So not only did they send us two of these panel stands, they sent us a bunch of other things. This was one of the tools that I requested because when I was doing the engine bay of this thing, there was a little three inch sander polisher that just worked phenomenal. Rivet, rib nut. Oh. Buddy. Combination, yep, that's the rib nut tool. Rib nut tool. High vis glowing quarter and three eighths drive shallow socket set. Oh, yep. Some socket rails, beautiful. Red and blue. Let's see, what is this? Oh, we put that in the paint Buddy, booth? Yep, that's for the paint booth, beautiful. Yeah, I told them that we had the paint booth that we just got it all set up. Oh, look at you go, dude. Mass see, now you can take your set home. I can I take my mine home. I like that, that's yeah. awesome. Bite, damage, fastener, impact sockets. Basically mm -hmm. like nut and bolt uh, removers once the head's stripped. Cutoff wheels, oh, a whole stack of them, perfect. I think they sent out the actual thing that those go on, go on too. Harmonic balancer puller set, mm -hmm. beautiful. We, one of those. So we pretty much used one of those on the RB26. Rivet nut kit. That's one of the shallow ones, I think. Oh yeah. So that way, you know, cause the other one, like a pair of bolt cutters or yeah. something. We've had one of these in the shop that shoots off the tip, and so we got a new one of those. Bunch of uh, swivels for the paint gun. Snap ring pliers set. That is awesome. Yeah, more, more sockets. Yep. Hot gun stapler. That's sick. For so, fixing like bumpers yep. and side skirts and all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, like if you have a plastic, like an OEM polyurethane style bumper that you get like a crack in, you use that hot stapler and you staple yeah. it back together. Some these lights. are these are their new LED lights. Yeah. So these ones are the ones that they have the rechargeable base. So it's wireless charging. So you literally plug this thing on your toolbox and then you just, you don't have to plug it in, plug in a USB cable, you just set it on there and, and it wirelessly charges. charges. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, so you got some of those? I guess we got a couple of those. Yeah. Look at all those. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, these are cool for uh, hose clamps when they're way down there and you're trying to get needle nose back there. Or, you know, they're just a pain in the butt. These things come in handy. Surface prep. Ooh, buddy, oh, these are the these are the bits. Are the, yep. These are the ones that they were uh, they were telling us about. So these are their Turbo Step Mechanics drill bit set. So it actually has kind of like a that kind of looks like a self tapper. But you know, normally if you're gonna drill something like a half inch, you start off kind of smaller and then you step it up. This basically does it all in one bit. So it's kind of like a step bit. And Sick. the crazy thing is, is so I actually tried a set of these out at Tommy's shop, but they were Matco. So basically Astro makes these for Matco and under their brand, they're $400. Yeah. Like for, th for th this set of bits right here, $400 for that set under the Astro brand, they're 200. That's crazy. Which is wild. And they're really, really good bits. Like they're insane. And that's been one thing that I've been complaining about recently is just having yeah. really crappy bits because it's hard to find good bits. Buddy, we got another box right here. Oh, that's all the paint, paint stuff? Paint filters. This. What is this? This was another tool we used on the R32 in Connecticut, which was a radiator pressure and vacuum tester. Because how many times have you put a truck or car back together, you put coolant in it, yeah, it leaks or something. And then it leaks. Literally, you could pressurize the system before you ever lose a drop of coolant. And that's exactly what we did on this thing because there was under the intake manifold that was leaking, turbo like on the AN line that I made was leaking. And then we actually had a little split in the radiator. Yeah, and also you can, you know, like if you have a, if you're losing coolant, you can't, it's not dripping, you know, you have mm -hmm. a bed head gasket or something. Pressurize you know, it. Pressurize the coolant system, turn the motor over, see if you can hear any leaks inside the intake or exhaust. Or see if it's like on a lot of diesel stuff, let's say it's pressurized in the EGR cooler exactly. or something like that. I need one of those. Not too bad. Uh, I need one of those, yeah. So huge shout out to Astro Tools for oh, sending yeah. this. Oh, also we have a panel stand right here too. Another another one of the, the paint tools. So I guess what uh, what have we got done since I've been gone? Almost everything on the C10 is ready to spray, which I think you're gonna do today. Yep, there's uh, a lot of things we need Bed to do spray, with the doors, you did that, the but. fenders. Uh, I already painted the bed, so that thing is pretty much ready to go back on. And it's pretty crazy the amount of work, everything's still needed, you know? I mean, we, we definitely learned our lesson with trying to do a giveaway in 30 days and a complete restoration on a classic car. It's hard to let go. So here's that other Astro panel stand right there. Ready, to, ready to spray, the fender's ready to spray. A few more things to do like with the tailgate and the hood, but everything's ready to spray and then basically start assembly of the truck. And then we have the 350Z out here. So the 350Z giveaway has actually already ended. This was a VIP giveaway that we kind of did when I was gone. And uh, that's basically what Sean has been working on heavily. A lot, a lot of hail. Gone. A lot, a lot of Tons hail. and tons of hail damage on this thing. So it is pretty much, the body is ready to spray. We're just working on the hatch a little bit more. It had this really bad wing on it. So this wing was like molded on, drilled on there and- Self tappers, it was, it was bad. There's all kinds of holes in the hatch. We were trying to find a new hatch, couldn't find one. 
everyone that we found was like $400 and you know, like 10 hours away. So instead of doing that, he just spent the day kind of like welding up some holes, you know, hammering down some dance, hammering down some high spots, essentially filling in the, like this, the whole car was just covered, especially this side was just seriously, there's probably easily 100, 150 uh, held in, held in. So I'm just this side that, you know, little ones we had to go and, and uh, find and fix. So the car is basically ready to spray. It's been uh, primered and blocked twice. We never started on the hatch because like you said, we were planning on buying a new one because this one was kind of messed up, but we never found one. So now we're at the stage of basically fixing the hatch. Once it's done, it's the car's ready for uh, yep. paint, so. So this thing should be in primer by the end of the day. I am going to be painting the doors and the fenders and the stuff for the C10. Classic car restoration, man, it's, uh, it's a lot of work. It was definitely the slippery slope with it, but how we are over here at Motion Auto, we're not gonna put out some like really shitty product or just like skim over something for a giveaway just because we don't have time. So even though the giveaway ended basically a month ago, we are st have still been working on the truck in the background trying to get it all done. And uh, that's exactly what we're gonna do. So uh, if you guys did get entered for the C10, I really appreciate it. We have not announced the winner yet just because we wanted to wait till the truck was a little bit more done because there is a cash option as well. There's nothing else to do other than uh, keep going, get back to work. Yeah, so let's go. Back to work, back to painting. Right. Huge shout out to Astro Tools. We're gonna get some of this stuff put away. Yeah, this is sick. We're gonna yeah. get back to work. I like this. Okay. Right. Yeah, yep. let's go. got done spraying the interior of this thing. So we hit that with the Raptor liner. The carpet kit that we got goes from the front, covers everything up except for that stuff in the back. So you would be able to see that behind the seats. We did the whole bed of it. So pretty stoked on how this turned out. To me, it just looks a lot more modern having just a completely blacked out bed like that. And it works really good once we get the wheels and everything painted on it and the actual doors set on it. This thing will look really, really sick. 350Z is pretty much ready to spray. Again, we did a VIP only giveaway while I was away in Connecticut and Sean spent most of his time messing with this thing, doing the bodywork, fixing the hell damage on it, primed and getting it ready to paint. It was a last minute decision where we didn't really have time to paint this thing before the end of the giveaway. And we did a vote in our VIP group. The colors were all over the place. The purple was number one, then it was white, then it was black and gray. I was just like, you know what? It's close enough to the end of this giveaway. We're gonna be painting it anyhow. I would rather give our VIPs or the person who wins this thing the chance to actually pick their own color the winner should be announced in about a week that's what's happening with that and then also with the c10 the winner of the c10 will probably be announced within the next week once we get like the doors and fenders and stuff on it as well so that leads us into the shop with the r32 now that this thing is back in colorado pretty stoked to kind of do some of the final touches on it so with this wiring specialties pro harness we actually already had extra sensors pinned into it and ready to go. We have a boost pressure, we have a ethanol content sensor, which are both pulled up right here, oil temperature, and a fuel PSI, so we have fuel pressure as well. So one of the things I'd like to do with this setup is I think we can make almost 400 horsepower with these turbos on pump fuel. We do have the Dietzworks 1000 cc injectors and a Dietzworks 400 fuel pump. So we might as well crank this thing up with some E85, which will should be able to put us, you know, closer to maybe 500 horsepower on these twin, these HKS GTSS twin turbos. And I'm pretty stoked for that. What we need to do is tie in this ethanol content sensor into the ECU. So that 
that way we could do uh, basically a flex fuel kit. So we could blend between E85 and we are also adding a three port Mac valve for our boost controller. If we have ethanol, it can turn up the boost. If we just put pump fuel in it, it turns down the boost, kind of vice versa. So pretty stoked on that. I got these little adapters right here. So this is a 3 8 steel quick connect to a 5 16 because we are running basically like the factory style fuel lines. And then with this Mac valve right here, the boost control stuff that we do before adds pressure to the top of the gate on like an external wastegate. Whereas with this thing, it will essentially bleed off boost pressure. I think these things have about a 14 pound spring in them. Instead of it seeing 14 pounds, it will actually like not let it get 14 pounds of boost. So that way, let's say it gets up to 20 pounds of boost and it's just like slowly relieving a little bit of the pressure. So that way the wastegates don't open and we're able to build more pressure. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook up that flex fuel sensor and the same thing with the boost controller. Then we will get into the ECU master ECU, get some of that set up and then we will be able to display all of that information on our BTI gauge that is in the car when we get to work. Now that we have these guys installed right here, have the little boost sensor or the Mac valve installed right there, flex fuel sensor in the return rail going back, the wiring specialties harness plugged right in, everything should be good to go. So I've already actually grabbed the ECU master, plugged it in and did a couple things, did a couple tests as well. So what we did is we went over here and we just enabled the flex fuel and then that actually ended up showing us our ethanol content right here on the BTI gauge, which is really cool. So we have 10%, which is pretty much the standard for normal pump gas, you know, whatever you go get. At the gas station, it usually always has 10% ethanol in it, unless you get the ethanol free. When we go to actually put ethanol in here, we'll be able to see it right there. And then also the ECU master will be able to see it and we will be able to blend between tables, add duty cycle to the boost controller, which is another thing that I was gonna show you guys. So now that we have the electronic boost controller hooked up, I just went over here to my boost parameters, enabled it as auxiliary three. Don't know what I did with my pin out from wiring specialties. So what I actually did is I just seen my available outputs, which was like one, three and five or something. And so what I did is I just did the test outputs feature right here. And what that did is I just tested it. I did one, two and three, two happen to be the fuel pump. Basically, as soon as you hit test, it like sits there and it just pulses so you could just feel it. And that's also a good way to test your injectors, your coils, any of that stuff before you do a first start after you wired a car or did anything with it or put a new wiring harness in it just to kind of double check and make sure ECU is putting out as far as auxiliary outputs is what it's actually doing. Now that we have boost controller hooked up, flex fuel sensor is enabled and reading. Uh, we're not really gonna do any tuning or anything like that, but what we can do is this thing right here. So this is the boost, the DC reference table. So you can see it is at 0%. So what we'll actually do, go right here and we'll just throw like 10% at it because normally they don't do much without that. Um, and then what we'll actually do is we'll take this thing for a quick little drive, do a quick little pull, maybe throw it up to like 20% and just make sure that the boost controller is working and that we were increasing our boost. And I actually have a dyno appointment scheduled for this thing next week. I'm not gonna spend my time trying to tune this thing or dial it in myself. I'd rather take it to my tuner and have him, um, you know, kind of dial it in. But I do like confirming everything. Everything is working, it's making changes that the car runs and drives before I get to the dyno. So that way we're not chasing issues or anything once we get on the dyno. Oh, and also one of the cool things is about this BTI gauge. Again, like I said, so this is one of my favorite pages. So you could actually come right here. So you could do your traction control settings. So let's say you want super, you know, nanny mode or whatever. You're gonna let your girlfriend drive in. It makes a thousand horsepower. You could adjust that stuff. You have your launch control. That's actually 
how I had the like the two-step stuff set up on the 2JZ Mustang. I'd call it like the car show gunshot two-step and that was on my launch control button and that is just on a can switch that is an output from that thing to the ECU master. And for example, what we will do for our boost controller eventually is it says boost switch input. So you could see like switch one, analog input, and then can switch. So you see can switch one, can switch two, can switch three, all the way to like can switch 16 inverted. And that will give us our, our can switch. So that way all it is is a can signal and we say, okay, we want some more boost. We come right here and you could do this. And then basically what you do is you bake, make a boost blend table. See, you pretty much have like a 10 position thing in there. So you could say, okay, this is this position right there. And then the way we know like stage five or number five on the boost controller is our high boost. And then number one on the boost controller or zero on the boost controller is just our normal pump gas thing. But then we could also just let it blend with the E85 as well. So lots of information, really cool stuff. You could set up like, you know, flat shift, rolling anti-lag. I think with the rolling anti-lag, you have to uh, like hold it. Pretty cool, cool thing like that. I think rolling an anti-lag, you just kind of do that and then you let off. This is the main one. I always like that. It looks pretty cool. So I'm gonna fire this thing up, take it for a rip. All right, boys, let's take this thing for a rip. I really like this thing. I've already driven this thing around a little bit. Need to put some new coilovers on the front of this thing. I think these HKS ones are kind of sieved. They seized, they basically feel like they're seized. So that's eight pounds of boost, seven pounds of boost. Feels pretty good. That's like 45, 50% throttle somewhere in there. All right, 11 pounds is what it showed. So you could actually go over here on the VTI gauge too and go to a freeze frame. So boost freeze frame. So it shows peak boost, two pounds. We'll rip it again. Eleven three. 11.3 pounds of boost, 12.1 air fuel. I really like that freeze frame right there. I'll probably turn the camera around when we're headed back and I'll show you guys that. Makes it really good when you're at the track to like see what happened. Like 4,400 RPM, it was at 13 degrees of timing. The oil temp was this, the coolant temp was that. This was the voltage, this was the fuel pressure. Here was the duty cycle, here's the oil pressure, there's the boost. Not used to not having sunglasses. We're going straight into the sun. I'm gonna pull over here. This thing is so much fun though. So smooth, so quiet and smooth. Just need some suspension stuff. Get this thing dialed in real quick. All right, let's see. So we were at 10% duty cycle. We'll go ahead and we'll just do 30%. See if I can get you guys a good shot of this freeze frame. So we're already hitting more boost. Everything is looking good in that regard. Air fuel is still good. God, this thing is so much fun. So that is, uh, almost 15 pounds of boost. So I don't think I'm gonna mess with it anymore. Um, obviously, we know the boost controller is working. We know the ethanol content is working. That's pretty much what we needed for our dyno now that this thing is back in Colorado. Can't wait to start driving it some more. It just feels so good. So let's do another pull here. Air fuel looked really spot on during those pulls, so we're okay to play with it. And again, we still are on pump gas. I'd probably only wanna go up to maybe 18, 19 pounds on pump fuel. These things are super low compression, so. Here we go. Oh yeah. This thing is good. These roads aren't no uh, Connecticut back roads, but they're still pretty good. This thing is so much 
fine. Uh, I don't know. We're currently getting another car ready for grid life. I wonder if I should get this one ready to take out on the track there. I think we're good to go. So if you guys like this video, if you guys are stoked on the R32 and uh, kind of the little updates around the shop, I know we got a lot of things going on. Currently have a big project ahead of me in front for grid life, but you guys will see that in the future. C10 giveaway winner and 350Z giveaway winner will be announced probably within the next week. I'm just stoked to get this thing on the dyno. Appreciate you guys watching. See you later.